Hello and welcome to the seventh mini lecture in the Scientific Procedure video series. My name is Martin Hughes. In the previous video we looked at data analysis and we're going to continue looking at data analysis today and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to reject or fail to reject your null hypotheses. So just to reiterate, last week we were looking at analysis and we're doing the same in this video, but we're going to look at some more sophisticated statistical analysis. In the last video, we entered some data into Excel. Hopefully you've extracted some more data. Uh, we did some simple descriptive statistics. And like I say, in this video, we will reject or fail to reject our null hypotheses. So it's a really key um, piece of information that we're going to give you today and some methods that you guys can implement and use in your own data set. I need to make two disclaimers, okay? Any student that watches these videos and goes on to do statistics, this is pitched at entry level. Things do get more complicated after this. However, for what we're trying to do in this lecture series, it's, it's perfectly okay to do what we're doing. Um, students that have not seen statistics before, you may have the opposite effect. You may feel a little bit overwhelmed by that. Please bear with me. Um, this material is not beyond you. And if you understood all the previous videos, then I have faith that you can understand this one. So we're going to introduce some potentially complicated things, and uh, maybe push you to the limit in terms of your knowledge and statistics. But once we get through this, then you guys are moving from the realm of non-scientists into becoming real life scientists. So it's important, it's difficult, um, and it's challenging. However, it's worthwhile all the same. So what are we going to look at today? Well, we're going to calculate some more statistics. We're going to look at variance. So last week, in the last video, I talked about coefficients or coefficients of variance, um, which doesn't really tell us much. So we're actually going to delete that information and we're going to look at variance. Then we're going to look at analysis, analysis of variance or ANOVA. So this doesn't sound great, I'll admit, but analysis of variance is the key thing that's going to allow us to either reject or fail to reject our null hypotheses. We can do that by looking at the following things that it gives us. An F statistic uh, will be provided by the ANOVA and a P value will also be provided by an ANOVA. So it's important the ANOVA analysis of variance is extremely important in this video. So what are we going to do when we calculate the variance? Well, the variance is actually extremely similar to the standard deviation, which we've actually already calculated. And in fact, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So the standard deviation is a bit more accurate and a bit more concrete. So we're probably just going to use standard deviation, but it's important I show you how to calculate variance as well. And to test out our null hypotheses or test our null hypotheses, we'll be testing the variance in time spent so essentially, what we're going to be looking at is the mean time spent by each BERT, and we're going to compare the means, and we can do this through ANOVA. So all of these things are interrelated, interconnected. ANOVA then, what is analysis of variance or ANOVA? It's a statistical test, which will ultimately allow us to reject or fail to reject our null hypotheses by providing two pieces of information, two key pieces of information the F statistic and the F critical value, um, we'll consider that as one thing at the moment, and the P value or the probability value. And we're going to use both of these pieces of information from the ANOVA to either reject or fail to reject our null hypotheses. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's remind ourselves, um, it's been a little while since we talked about our null hypotheses. Our null hypothesis was that there is no difference in time spent at a feeding station between different species of birds. Okay, and we assume this to be true until we provide data on the contrary. Okay, so we need to either reject or fail to reject our null hypotheses. So it's important that we remember what that is. If we do reject our null hypotheses, our alternative hypothesis is there is a difference in time spent at a feeding station between different species of birds. So we have these two competing statements, but the only one we're testing 
is the null hypothesis. So how do we reject or fail to reject? How do we do this? Well, essentially, if we rewrite our null hypothesis, what we're essentially saying in the null hypothesis is the time spent by the magpie will equal the time spent by the pigeon, which will equal the time spent by the gala, which will equal the time spent by the starling, which will equal the time spent by any other bird that you've recorded. That's essentially what we're saying. For our null hypothesis to be correct, then there's no difference in those times. So the magpie would spend about the same time as the pigeon, the gala and the starling, so on and so forth. So the best thing we can do is compare the averages, the average time spent by the magpie, the average time spent by the pigeon, the gala, the starling, whatever, how many of our birds we have recorded in the virtual heights. So we're basically saying for the null hypothesis to be correct, all of the means would have to equal each other. The mean time spent by each bird would equal each other. And we've actually looked at some of the averages already and that doesn't appear to be the case. So how do we prove that these numbers are different? It's not enough for us in science just to look at the numbers and say, yep, those numbers are different, therefore I reject my null hypothesis. We need to be a little bit more sophisticated than that. Um, and this is where the ANOVA comes in. Essentially what the ANOVA will allow us to do is compare those means statistically. So it will compare the variation in time spent between each one of the groups, each one of the bird species that we have. So hopefully this becomes clearer. Um, I don't expect you guys just to get this instantly, um, but we're not looking at anything too complicated. We're just basically trying to see if the time spent between the species is the same. So we're getting to the crux of our hypotheses. So essentially what an ANOVA does, just to repeat that, it compares the means statistically. And when it does this, it will produce an F statistic and an F critical value and a P value. And these two things are really important when it comes to rejecting or failing to reject our null hypotheses. So I, I've asked you guys to give me a little bit of your trust and believe what I'm saying. Um, you can double check all of this information elsewhere. It's not the purpose of these videos to, to kind of give you a stats lesson. Um, I think I alluded to the metaphor that I know how to drive a car, but I'm unsure of how a car works. I wouldn't be able to open the bonnet and tell you how the car runs, but I know how to drive it. So this is essentially the same thing. We're driving the car, but we don't need to know anything that's happening underneath the bonnet at this moment in time. So the mathematics that's involved and how these uh, values are produced um, aren't really of our concern at the moment. If you go on to do, do statistics and in science, then yes, you will need to address those issues and figure out what's actually happening. But for the purposes of this, if you trust me, then we can accept or, uh, sorry, reject or fail to reject our null hypotheses based on these pieces of information. So if our F statistic which is going to be produced by the ANOVA is larger than the F critical value, which is also produced by the ANOVA, we can reject our null hypotheses. So essentially what I'm saying is if the number for the F statistic is larger than the number of the F critical value, we can reject our null hypotheses. And therefore the opposite is true. So if the number of the F statistic is smaller, than the number of the F critical value, then we fail to reject our null hypotheses. So just trust what I'm saying at the moment, okay? If we have our F statistic is larger than our F critical value when we run the ANOVA, then we can reject our null hypotheses. You may have heard of a p-value, you may not, um, a probability value. And in science, it's important to understand what the p-value is, however, it's more accurate to look at the F statistics for a whole bunch of late reasons. Um, the p-value may, in some circumstances, be a little bit misleading. Um, but again, for the purposes of what we are looking at, um, I think it's safe to, to talk about it in these terms. So a probability value, or a p-value, is the probability our null, our null hypothesis is true. Okay, And it's going to give us a number between 0 and 1. 0 being 0% 0 true, and one would be 100% true, okay? So the probability is given in a decimal. 
Therefore, if we had a p-value, for example, of 0 0.9, then the probability Arnold hypothesis is true is 90% based on our data. So we got 0 0.5, then Arnold hypothesis would be 50% true, uh, four, uh, 0 0.4 would be 40%, so on and so forth. So that's important because if we have a threshold limit and we say, okay, if it's below a certain percentage, we're going to reject or not hypotheses. And that's what we have in science. In science, we often use a cutoff. If our p-value is above a certain number, we would fail to reject our null hypotheses. And if it's below a certain number, we can reject our null hypotheses. And typically, and this differs, just a little caveat, but typically this number is often 0 0.05 or 5%. So if we get a p-value of 0 0.05 or below, we would reject our null hypotheses. If we get a p-value above 0 0.05, we would fail to reject our null hypotheses. Essentially what we're saying here, if it's 5% or below, so if our null hypotheses, if there's a 5% chance that our null hypothesis is true or below, so 5 or 4 or 3 or 2 or 1% chance, we're going to reject our null hypothesis because we're 95% sure that it's not true. Okay, so this is the sort of, when we talked about null hypotheses before, the mental gymnastics a little bit. Um, but if you just trust that if our p-value is below 0 0.05 from the ANOVA, we are going to reject our null hypotheses. And if our p-value is above 0 0.05, then we're going to fail to reject our null hypotheses. I hope that makes sense. And you maybe have heard of this before. I'll leave it there just now. So we're going to look at the data and see what we've got. So if I go back into the data sheet that we looked at before, hopefully this looks familiar. Like I've already said, we're going to remove the coefficient of variance. Okay, that's not really important. So I'm just going to delete that in a moment. One thing that I think is important is variance total. So we type in variance here. We're going to calculate the variance. And like I say, this is an extension of the standard deviation. And I'll show you how in a little second. Very simply, um, from Excel, like all things, we have a formula. It does a lot of the calculation for us, which is great. And helpfully, if we want to calculate variance, I just need to type in VA and it's the first one that comes up. So I can double click variance. Oops. And then I highlight magpie, click the little tick. And there we go. It's calculated the variance. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if I click and drag this along, it calculates the variance for the magpie, the pigeon, the galah and the starling. And you, you remember when I said at the start of this video, the variance uh, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So let's check that. So if I click equals again, this num uh, square root, S Q R T square root. So basically the square root of this number here should equal 10.7. So I double click that. And then I click the square root of this number. And I click tick. 10.7. Okay, it's giving me some more decimal places. We can fix that. Click and drag that along. And there we go. So if I get rid of the decimal points, just to make it look a bit cleaner. Yep, that adds up. Okay, so the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So the variance gives me a, a kind of idea of all the total variance and the square, the square root is a little bit more accurate. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. So we have variance, we have standard deviation, we have the means, and we have the median. And the mean is what is really important to us again. So essentially what our ANOVA is going to do, so I'm not being patronising, but we know that 19.4 is different from 42.24. And that's different from 4.98. And that's different from 22.59. But it's not enough for us to say that. Okay, we need to use a statistic to be able to test between those means, essentially. So this is where the ANOVA comes in. This is where things can get a little bit complicated. I'm using a Mac. A lot of people use Microsoft and Windows. 
And um, if you do have issues, please leave comments because there's a certain way of doing things. You may have to add in this package to Excel. So it's basically going to add in and it'll allow you to do some data analysis. But if you're using a Mac or if you have a Windows and you, you have this option, fantastic. If you don't, I'll maybe leave a description of how you can add it or a link to another video uh, that shows you how to add this package. But essentially, what you guys are going to do, I think what we'll do actually is if we highlight all of this. So highlight all your data. We're going to put it into a new data sheet. Just things are getting a little bit hectic here on my single data sheet. So if I copy here, new sheet, insert sheet, paste. Okay, so what's interesting actually is maybe we have the mean in there as well. Just copy and paste. Okay, so I just want to have the mean in there just to remind me because it's going to be important in a little second. What we want to do to conduct the ANOVA, so to compare the, the means statistically, if I highlight all of my data and I go to tools or even data, sorry, I click data. So you have home, insert, page layout, formulas and data. I'm highlighting my data. On the right hand side, you may or may not have this, depending if it's loaded into Excel or not, depending what version of Windows you're using all the rest of it. Okay, so I can't uh, speak for your computer, but there is a way to get this if you have Excel. So don't panic. Um, we can sort you out. But if we click on data analysis. It gives me a list down here. And if I scroll to the top, because it starts with an A, here we go, we have a Nova single factor. So we're just looking at the single factor. So if I click OK for that. Okay. It gives me this little uh, screen here. And basically, all, all it's asking is, like, okay, you need to tell me what I need to do. Excel is asking me, what are we doing here? So the input is asking me, where am I getting the data from? And if I click this little icon here, um, I think it's to represent the cells in a little highlighted cell. So if I click on that, and I just highlight this data again, I'm telling Excel, this is where I want you to analyze my data. This is where we're getting the data for the ANOVA. And I click this little symbol here. Okay, so now it knows I've got an input range. This is where we're looking at the information. Are labels in the first row? Yep, they are. We have a magpie, crested pigeon, gala, and starling. So I'm telling Excel these are not numbers, these are labels. So I'll just check that. Our alpha is the probability. So remember I said if it's below or above 0 0.05, this is the default setting. If that is not in there, put 0 0.05, but that should be the default setting. That's okay. And then Excel is asking me, where do you want me to put this information for you? So we can create a new worksheet if we want, and it will create a new sheet down here, but we can keep things on the same page. So I think that's the best. So I'm going to click output range and I'm going to tell it, where do I want you to put this ANOVA table? So I click this button again. And I think if you put it here for me, that'd be great. Click the little button again. And that's it. So now I press OK and it will conduct an analysis of variance. And it's as simple as that. So we're not actually doing any maths here. We're just telling Excel uh, where we're getting the information from and where do we want to see the information. OK. Here we go. Right. So when you initially look at this, it doesn't look great, I'll admit. However, this is just a summary table at the top from the ANOVA. This is not really what we're interested in at the moment. Um, but, okay, we recognize all of this. It tells me the groups. Magpie, Pigeon, Galah, Starling. Okay, that sounds good. Nine counts of data. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it's just telling me how many counts of data for each group. That's fair enough. The sum, it's just totaled all these numbers up and gave me a total number here. Let's just double check. So for the magpie, it says 174.61. So if I go to equals sum here, yep, it's the same. And if I pull it across, all good. Average, 19.40, that's what we have, 42. Okay, and then the variance. So we had that in another sheet, but we'll do that again. 
equals variance. Awesome. Okay, one one four three one two. Okay, that adds up. So essentially, if you do the ANOVA, it's going to have a summary table for us, which is quite useful. Um, it saves us maybe doing all this stuff again, but it allows us to kind of cross check. Okay, this makes sense. If all this is adding up, then I'm fairly confident the ANOVA has worked well as well. Okay, so what did we say? Look at the ANOVA. There's a lot of information here that is important, but I'm not going to go over it with you, okay? Um, for the purposes of this, we don't need to fill your brain up with too much information. Um, there's plenty of information online. If you do, leave a comment and want to find out more, by all means. Um, but essentially, what we were looking at again was that F value, F critical value, the F statistic, sorry, and F critical, and the P value. And we're looking at the between groups. We're comparing the time spent between these groups of birds. This is called the sums of squared. I'm not too concerned about this at the moment. Degrees of freedom, again, this is related to the amount of data that we've used, but we're not too concerned at the moment. Mean squared, okay, we're not too concerned. I haven't introduced that stuff. It is important, I'm not disregarding it. However, for what we are looking at, we're just going to ignore it just now, okay? What I said before was the F statistic and F critical value and the P value were all important to us. If we remind ourselves just briefly with the PowerPoint, I said, if our F statistic is larger than our F critical value, we can reject our null hypotheses. So essentially, if the number for the F statistic is larger than the number of the F critical value, we're going to reject our null hypotheses. What is our null hypotheses? There is no difference in time spent at a feeding station between different species of birds. So if my F statistic is larger than my F critical, I'm going to reject this hypothesis. And this is what we've been trying to do the whole time, is test our hypotheses. So this is our F statistic here, 18. Our F critical value is 2.9. 18 is bigger than 2.9. I'm going to reject my null hypotheses. Okay. And that's... That's what the importance is of the F uh, value. Okay, the second thing we're going to look at was the P value. Let's remind ourselves. If our P value is below 0 0.05, we will reject our null hypotheses. Our P value is above 0 0.05, we will fail to reject our null hypotheses. So the F statistic and the F critical value and the P value go hand in hand. So we've already rejected our null hypotheses, but we're providing further evidence of that through the ANOVA. So if we look at our p-value, mm, okay, 4.9086e minus 07. What is that? Why is there a letter in my number, you may ask? Well, essentially what's happened here is the p-value is tiny. What that is saying is there is seven points after the decimal point, six zeros, and then the seventh number is the four. So essentially what it's saying here is we have 0 0.0000049 or 4908. That is much smaller than 0 0.05. I hope you agree. Um, let's see if we can change this into a number. So if we go click on the p-value, I'm just going to copy the p-value. I'm going to bring it over here. Just see if we can actually get the number as a number. If I go to home and click number, I'm telling that cell I want to see a number. Okay, the cell isn't big enough to show me 0, 0.00000. So if I go back up here to where we, we've been moving the decimal point down, I want to move the decimal point up now. I want to have more significant figures. Okay, there we go. Our p-value is 0 0.00000049086. I hope you agree with me that this is below 0 0.05. It's extremely significant. Our p-value is below 0 0.05, so we reject our null hypotheses. So I'm going to reject my null hypotheses again, which I've already done with my F statistic, but it just 
validates that previous decision. Okay, so before this video, you may not have heard of an ANOVA and you may not have understood how are we going to reject or fail to reject on all hypotheses. And this is how we do it. So I hope this has been clear. I understand that this is potentially, um, you know, totally different from what you're used to. However, I don't feel this is beyond anybody that's been watching the videos. Um, and this is critical. This part is essential for us now to move on and talk about our results and start thinking about writing the paper. When we have this information, we know now that we have rejected our null hypotheses. So go back to our two hypotheses. We have now rejected this. I reject this null hypothesis. Remember, we assume this to be true until we can provide data on the contrary or information on the contrary, and we've done that. Our null hypothesis, there's no difference in time spent at a feeding station between different species of birds. Reject. I'm rejecting this hypothesis. So I can now accept my alternative hypothesis that there is a difference in the time spent at a feeding station between different species of birds. Okay, so we now have that information. That's extremely important um, for the, the remainder of the videos that I'm going to put up. What we're going to look at in the next video is how do we extract that relevant information? How would we present that information in the report? And then we'll talk about the report structure more generally. What are the, the subheadings that we have to have? And how would I approach writing a scientific report? Okay. I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for your attention. Please leave comments. We've had some good comments um, from people watching the videos. Chris gave me a good comment online asking about birds in, the, in the, the videos that he couldn't identify, and that's fine. So if you record the birds and get the, the time for it, then maybe just reject. We can omit that data uh, when we do the analysis, but just collect as much information as possible and don't get too caught up in what the data looks like just now. One important thing that I didn't mention, I should mention, is some of my students here at CSU um, had calculated or put in their data and they maybe have seconds. And you can see when I add seconds, the number then fires across to the left-hand side. Um, so what we want to do is just delete the units. We can put the units back in to our, our report which is really important. But for the purposes of Excel, we're, we just want to work with numbers and we want them all to be the same units. So for example, we have 65 seconds here. Some of my students have maybe written one minute, five seconds, which is not wrong, but we need to convert this to a single unit, which would be 65. Okay, I'll just delete that, go return. So that's something I didn't mention before. And also a lot of people have asked, okay, well, Maybe I have 40 data entries for magpies and only 10 data entries for the pigeons. We're working with the averages, so it's okay. Um, an average is where we add all of these up and divide by the total number of individuals. So it does correct. So we have lots of magpies and a few crested pigeons. The, what we're actually comparing has already been corrected because um, we're looking at averages. So don't, don't worry about that. Don't be too concerned about that either. And if you do have any issues, I would encourage you to leave some comments while these videos are being made. Um, it's May 2018. If you're watching this sometime in the future, then um, I'll still try and keep on top of that. But if you, we still have a few videos to go, um, so your input would be valuable. But yeah, thank you so much again, and I'll talk to you in the next video.